Hello there, people of the internet. That sounded a little bit to you and McGregor for my liking, but I'm just hyper aware that I always go, Aya, it's me. And um, it's starting to make me feel a bit queasy. In the last video, we touched on a lick from Jimmy Page and I asked you if you could guess the song that it came from. And I was blown away by just how many guesses I got, but also further blown away into the windy distance with just how many were incorrect. What are you playing at? The song that it was from was Houses of the Holy. I think around two minutes 14, it was one of his variations in around the kind of A power chord riff that he plays. But with so many guesses, it got me wondering whether it was one of those licks that he kind of rotated, had in his arsenal, it was one of his signature go-tos, if you like. And um, all the great players have those things. That's what makes them recognizable. Nowadays, we're spoiled for choice. I feel like we're all a little bit of many guitarists in the things that we've picked up. So the ones that stand out in modern day are even more special. Enough chitter chatter. I'm gonna show you another lick today. This one is by Mr. Joe Satriani from a song called, I'm not gonna tell you, you'll have to figure it out. You like this game, don't you? I knew it. But Satriani is famously inspired by Page and he's always sung his praises in um, interviews, little clippings in magazines I remember reading as a kid. Now this lick, I always kind of, I don't know, winged my way through it and it's fast and um, ferocious and very, very tricky to, to get right and at speed. But I think this kind of lick is a good example of how Page's playing inspired the next generation. Someone as ridiculously incredible and as flash as Joe Satriani. Maybe he spent hours trying to figure out stuff like the licks from Houses of the Holy and then took it to the next level in terms of like speed and finesse. <laughs> What song is that from? Let me know in the comments below. It's pretty obvious, but I said that last time. Quite a lot of you got it wrong. So the reason I went with this one next is because it's in exactly the same area of the fretboard using the same scale shape, um, but it's about 10 times more difficult, but it'll make you 10 times better and 26 times more flash and 38 times more impressive. <laughs> so, First part goes like this. So we're gonna start with a whole tone bend on the fourth fret of the G string. Then we're gonna hit second fret of the E, then the B. So you can just flat bar that, which makes your life easier. Pinky on the fifth fret. And then come back to that fourth fret of the G. Whole tone bend up, but give it some vibrato. All together. Now we've got this little run. Again, we're starting on the second fret of the high E, and if you prep that index finger as a flat bar, again, it's making your life easier in a second, because we're gonna pull off from the fifth fret of the B to the second fret. Okay, and if you had to kind of move like that, you can do it, but it's another movement for me that doesn't need to be there. Then you're gonna bend the fourth fret of the G up, um, What's the word? Sneakily, okay? You don't want it to just go like that. You've ruined it if you do that. You need to do this. Sneakily, right? Come back up to the second fret of the B, and then you're gonna hit um, the fifth fret of the G, the flat five, if we're thinking of it as F sharp blues here, and then you're gonna pull off to the fourth fret and the second fret. Uh, 
And then you're going to pull off from the fourth fret of the D to the second fret. Now this is the tricky bit for me. I always kind of got that little bit wrong. I think what I've done here is pretty close to the track. Um, I won't play what I used to do because that'll just confuse you. But from here, we're going to go like this. Stick those two little squealing notes in at the end, if you like. Now, you're going to start with an upstroke. I think that's important uh, that it's an upstroke on the second fret of the D. And then we're going to go 4, 3, 2, 0. Oh. And that's all pull offs coming down the blue scale there. And instead of hitting the minor third here on the fifth fret of the E, I think it's nice to hit it in the open position. And then that F sharp, okay? Try and like think of it rhythmically, like a little drum fill. Then you've got the fourth fret of the G and the second fret. Pinched harmonic if you want. All together slow, you should have this. Now, the trickiest part for me is that pull off in the middle and then picking the note you've pulled off to again to start the next phrase. I literally sat and did that for ages because it kept like tripping me up. That time, tripped me up again. What I did then was I picked it instead of pulling it off. But it doesn't have the same kind of whip that the pull off does. So make sure you go slow and build it up. So let's take a look at the scale shape that this lick is coming from. F sharp blue scale. Um, now you know that, you can use it wherever you want. Let's transpose that up to B. Now, because we can't use the open string, the only thing that you're going to have to make your mind upon is when you slide back from the perfect fifth to the blues note, flat five, and the fourth, whether you're coming back to that minor third with an extra slide, it's quite a cool thing to do, then the root, or whether you're going to stay in that first position and use your pinky for the minor third. I don't like that because I have to change my hand position, but you can still do it. Or you can slide back. Now what about me taking that lick and moving it to a different scale position on the fretboard? and trying to see whether I can emulate it there. So I'm going to take the F sharp blue scale here, root to the A string. I'm going to try something similar. It's a new lick, albeit it's rhythmically identical to the top secret Satriani lick. If you know it, let me know in the comments below. But harmonically, it's completely different. If you were sat on the front row, a little blues jam, watching me, like this, oh, what was that? I don't think you'd go, he's ripping off Satriani all night. I am, but don't tell anyone. But honestly, imagine if you did this once a day with one of your favorite licks from a song and then 
literally move it to a different area of the fretboard and create something out of what you can already do that's new. And I can guarantee you that will go a long way to like busting you out of the box and feeling like you're stuck in a rut because I've never done that before. And if I don't forget that lick, you'll see that cropping up because it'll become part of my arsenal. Not Arsenal Football Club though. I'm not about that. Anyway, pop that there for a second. If you did enjoy this video today and you would like the tabs to go with it, then you can get them over on my Patreon. Links in the top corner up there or down below. Pick your tier, guitar profiles, whatever you need, chat with me. I do my very best to get back to everyone. Anyone who's already over there and in the comments below will attest to that. Um, and yeah, like I said, I wanted to put another one of these little videos together because you seem to like the last one. It's manageable, right? Short and sweet. Speaking of short and sweet, I'm going. But before you do, subscribe. Bell next to it. Oh, I've done it in the wrong fucking order. Subscribe. Like the video. Bell next to it. I've still done it in the wrong order. I'm going. Short but sweet. I'm not going to flick this at the camera, am I? Yeah, probably. Cool. I'll see you later.